An organic garden does not use any chemical fertilizers to encourage plants and vegetables to grow. Composting is a natural process that breaks down organic waste and turns it into a soil conditioner that is full of nutrients. These nutrients are essential for the garden and help plants and vegetables to grow. In Holy Trinity School in Donna Mead, pupils separate waste into biodegradable and non-biodegradable waste every day. They collect organic matter like apple cores and waste paper and empty it into their school compost bins. This helps to reduce waste in the school and makes compost for the school's vegetable beds. Making compost requires warmth, air, moisture and a good mix of materials. Items like tea bags, vegetable peelings, grass cuttings, old flowers and straw can be added to the compost bin. It should be filled in different layers, as the air pockets between the different layers will help speed up the composting process. This one is on the top, it's still full of... Um, as the ingredients are placed in the compost bin, they are broken down by bacteria, worms and other insects, and eventually brown compost forms. So what we're going to hope, do you see all the bugs? Yeah. What have we got? Spiders, spiderwigs, ants, there's loads of ants. Compost contains two elements, carbon and nitrogen. It can be placed on vegetable gardens, flower beds and around trees and helps to improve the texture and quality of the soil. There are certain things that should not be added to the compost bins in a school. Rats are attracted to cooked food, dairy products, meat and fish, so care should be taken not to add these products to the compost bins. It's important that a balanced mixture of materials is placed in the compost bin so the compost can decompose properly. At Holy Trinity School, one of the compost bins wasn't working properly. OK, well, we emptied the compost bins out this morning and we found some good compost in the bottom and a lot of anaerobic stuff in the middle. In other words, it had, it, it had lost its, orga, uh, its oxygen component and it had gone sort of smelly and soggy. So we removed the good compost and what we're doing now is mixing the smelly stuff with fresh shredded paper and fresh garden waste and things like that so that it can rejuvenate and get more oxygen and start the process again. So we're filling one or two of the bins with all that stuff and hopefully by the spring then there'll be good compost for the garden and then the third compost bin will be left more or less empty for the fresh uh, waste coming from the school. At Skull Linn of Iasa in Prosperous, the pupils have a community composter. The green team has some suggestions on how to make it work more effectively. One of the plans your ye had was to stop using the green cones and start yeah. using this. Can yeah. you see the problem? Yes. yes. All the stuff's coming out and yeah. making a mess. And what's making the mess, do you think? Crew. 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 Yeah. Crew. So you need some net mm. or something, or maybe a little bit of plastic. Right. Perfect. Yeah. Now the other thing is we could do is still use the green cone for the food waste and the paper. When it's partially composted, we just saw it dug out, didn't we? Yeah. And when it's got in that stage, it can be mixed in with this, and then it would be good for this. So in here go the grass cuttings, hedge cuttings, tree cuttings, um, weeds from the garden, all of these things. But the food waste can be composted first and then mixed in. Composting is an important aspect of any organic garden and should be carried out throughout the year. An organic garden can be a welcome addition to school life and provides an additional learning resource for both teachers and pupils. Pupils gain hands-on experience of gardening and the motivation to learn about plants and wildlife. You should carry out a garden audit to help you decide what type of garden will best fit your needs and resources. This garden audit will help you evaluate the growing and environmental conditions of the school grounds. Measure the area that has been allocated for the garden. Examine the type of soil that exists in the garden as it will determine the type of plants you can grow. Check the potential garden site at different times of the day to see how much sunlight it receives. Look at what types of plants, trees and flowers already exist in the garden and incorporate them into the overall design. 
Once you have carried out an audit of the existing school grounds, then you can start to plan what you'll put in the new organic garden. Does your school have an orchard or fruit bushes? Give pupils and teachers the opportunity to brainstorm ideas for the garden. Yeah. Are you all interested in doing the work? There are many different things that can be incorporated into the design of an organic garden. Beds for growing vegetables and plants. A composting area. This will allow pupils to convert organic waste from the school into rich and nutritious compost for the plant beds. An orchard area where pupils can grow fruit trees like apples and gooseberries. A native woodland area or a hedgerow. These will provide a habitat for birds and wildlife. A pond will also help create a habitat for animals and insects. A polytunnel can be used to grow plants in throughout the school year and will provide an additional learning resource. Create a detailed design on paper that defines the different areas of the new garden. Purchase items like hand trowels, spades, seeds and plants in bulk wherever possible to reduce costs. Try to coordinate garden activities so that each class has an area of interest in the garden. Assign different tasks and responsibilities to each teacher and their class, so that all the work in the garden can be shared equally. This means all classes get an equal opportunity to participate in the garden.